All right, so this is your standard O2 cylinder you're going to see out in the field. This is a D tank that denotes the size. There's several different sizes. This is something you will take portably with you on scene. A couple things. This is obviously the cylinder. The green paint on top denotes that it is oxygen. But looking at the stem, which is this upper portion here, there's this side with a small indentation ground into the metal. And if we flip it over 180 degrees, we have, this is actually where the oxygen is going to come out. You can see the valve in there, which is controlled from this stem up here. And then we have these two machined holes. Those correspond with the regulator to make sure that you put it on correctly. Again, this valve up here can be opened and closed by using this stem. So let's talk a little bit about the regulator. This is called a therapeutic regulator. It takes the pressure from inside the bottle, which is very high, and allows us to use it for a BVM, nasal cannula, non-rebreather mask. <laughs> Biggest components are this dial. This will indicate the PSI, pounds per square inch, that's present in the O2 cylinder. A full tank will read at 2,000 PSI, and in the field we typically change these out when it drops below 1,000. This is your flow rate dial. This allows you to turn to the specified liter per minute flow that you would like. So it starts here at one, goes to two, then three, four, jumps up to six. So that'll be your flow rate for a nasal cannula, anywhere from one to six liters a minute. Eight liters a minute you might use with a nebulizer. 10 liters a minute, that's where we start with our nasal cannula, or our 10 liters a minute is where we start with our non-rebreather mass, and then it jumps to 12, followed by 15. 15 is also the setting you'll use for a BVM. There's additional settings, 20 and 25. Don't worry about those. We do not use anything above 15. 15 is the max. This connection right here, this is called the tree. This is where you plug in the end of either the nasal cannula, non-rebreather mask, or the BVM. These metal threaded connections are for ventilation devices. Now, so then on the inside here, you can see this black O-ring right here. It's very important to make sure that O-ring is there. If that O-ring's not there, you're going to have a leak in between the regulator and the bottle where they interface. It's not going to seal correctly. Sometimes you need to replace those. The newer ones, however, you can go a really long time without having to replace them. These two prongs, these are what line up to the O2 bottle. So I'll show you that right now. So we've got our O2 bottle. These are the two indentations that correspond to these two prongs. So these prongs are going to fit into these indentations. Simply all you have to do, slide the regulator on. See how I'm going to match up the holes here. I'll match those up. And then I'll tighten down. This is called the T-handle right here. We'll tighten that down until it is firmly attached. So once we've got the regulator on our bottle, we'll go ahead and pressurize the regulator. We'll do that simply by turning this one full turn. And you can see the dial has jumped up and now you are able to adjust the flow rate as needed. So this would be six, the high end of a nasal cannula. This would be 10, low end of a non-rebreather. And this would be 15, either the high end for a non-rebreather or your go-to for using a bag valve mask. When you're done, simply turn the regulator back to zero. Tighten this up, one full turn. There's a little check valve here that you can press in, or you can just open this up. I'm going to press this in because it's faster. So we release the pressure that was left in the regulator. Now we can take this off and remove it. 